Right. Chapter 13 of I Malala, the Diary of Gol Makai. Page 129. Islam has given us the right and says that every girl and boy should go to school. The Quran says we should seek knowledge, study hard, and learn the mysteries of the world. So, as always, a better contrast between what is practiced and what is written. Then he wrote out my words, and once a week they would appear on the BBC Urdu website. Just like Anne Frank of the Diary of Anne Frank. And so obviously the suggestion there is that you know, she was also um, sorry, she was also kind of being oppressed, which of course is part of the reason she became a refugee. Um, but obviously even just making the comparison between her and Anne Frank suggests that kind of what the Taliban are doing is sort of genocidal as bad as uh, the Nazis and you know, those sort of things. And then I've also got here question of authorship, so it's not entirely clear kind of who's writing that because she's you know, being blogged on behalf of someone else. I'm just going to put here, if I can write it in this basically, but foreshadowing. So it was very sad as in the end of the family betrayed and arrested Anne Frank and so she's just retelling the story, the bad thing that's happened, and what, you know, foreshadowing a bad end for her as well. Okay, the pseudonym Gold Mackay, which means cornflower, is the name of the heroine in a pastoral and folk story. It's kind of Romeo and Juliet's story. So, in the Holy Quran, of course. I had a dr terrible dream last night filled with military helicopters and Taliban. I have had such dreams since the launch of, launch of the military operation in SWAT. So, I'm just starting to get a bit freaked out. I heard a man behind me saying, I will kill you. I quickened my pace after a while, I looked back to see if he was following me to my huge role if he wasn't. So, I think from memory, yeah. So, sort of, after all, I got to know the kind of things Hai Kaka wanted me to talk about and became more confident. He called them pungent sentences. So, again, it's kind of. I guess this is where the question of authorship comes up again, and maybe, you know, just sort of hamming it up, whether you think she's kind of, I don't know, whether you think she's still maintaining the truth, or whether she's kind of becoming a little bit creative with her writings, it's hard to say without reading it, but interesting. I was getting ready for school one day, I was about to put on my uniform when I remembered the advice about principal, so that day I sort of decided to wear my favourite pink dress. Okay, so pretty good. So we'll do a little sort of clothing symbol, whatever that is for you. But when you are made to wear it, it's a different matter. So, so she wrote about the burqa, and, you know, should, in theory, according to her, be kind of a choice that you make in your life. But if someone forces you to do it, she's, she's not on board with that any, anymore, or if she ever was. Um, okay, we're going to skip that, not too much. Grief stricken, yeah, I'm sure. I began to see that the pen and the words that come from it are much more powerful than machine guns, tanks, or helicopters. So let's call that activism, I guess. And so that's kind of the emergence of the pen as motif again, but also activism, because she thinks that's super important. At 132, we've got gender roles again. So, a neighbor said Taliban were instructing people to make it known to the mosque if their daughters were unmarried so they could be married off, probably to militants. So, that's kind of not ideal, is it? Um, I've got my little crown drawing here, which is actually a depiction of the SWAT belly and my interpretation of it. SWAT has given us so much in these tough days, we must be strong for our family, he said. Why should we change our names? That's what criminals do. So you really get the impression that the pressure is mounting up. And it kind of, yeah, that's important for sure. As a woman, she could not live alone. Okay, New York Times website. So you really see the West and the East tension emerging again. It's just sort of becoming a symbol for a lot of different things. Fear in my heart, of course we've got fear again. Ben's running out, she speaks better English than the rest of you who are translating for her. So this is kind of her spending time in sort of the media, recording TV shows and things. 
for they had come a long way in this hard for us as pastorals to refuse hospitality. So again, this pastoral culture, as, as often is the case. We've got some violence here, like always. We've got a pen emerging, which really kind of comes strong here. When someone takes away your pens and realizes how important education is, as ever, that's kind of a really strong opinion of hers. You cannot stop me, I'll get my education if it's at home, school, or somewhere else. This is our request for the world to save our school, save our Pakistan, save our Pakistan, save our swap. So there we are. Activism. She was starting to link her pen ideas. You can see, I mean, we she talked about being coached into writing pungent sentences. And you can see that her kind of writing is becoming that way, it's becoming, I guess, viral, like a kind of one pen, one teacher, one book, one whatever the exact phrasing is. Is sort of coming from this time when she's, I don't know about being trained, but she's sort of being upskilled a little bit to kind of, um, you know, to become good at making her ideas known, I guess. So we've got fear again. I'm going to use highlighter just because my pen's run out. And a little, okay, irony. I spoke of the irony of the Taliban wanting female teachers and doctors. For women, you're not letting girls go to school to qualify for these jobs. A bit of activism in there as well, as I guess. We've got some corruption. When we have one Muslim, Muslim Khan had said girls should go back to school and learn Western ways. This from a man who lived so long in America. So, you know. She finds these people highly flawed and problematic. I'm just going to pause it here and grab a pen that works. All right, part two. Now it's one hundred percent more working pen. All right, one thirty-six. Learn Eastern instruments which will treat the sick. So you can see how kind of ideology is starting to become problematic for actual life. If it hadn't already, education is neither Eastern nor Western. It is human. All right, so this is where you can really see she's getting her. Education is education. We should learn everything and then choose which parts to follow. Education is neither Eastern nor Western. My mother used to tell me to hide my face. She'd be in Perda. So yeah, she's kind of becoming a young woman, we imagine at this point. So she sort of needs to cover herself up and hide away. Please God, make Malala like Benazir Bhutto, but do not give her Benazir's short life. So they want her to be sort of famous and successful, but not to die young. Also, I guess this uh, the idea of Perda and hiding your face is kind of, if you think of whether you're looking at the world through a male-centric lens. So if you're doing that, then you're thinking about kind of... So let's pretend there's a tension between men and women. So. Uh, men find women attractive and so forth. And then the idea of Perda is that, okay, well then it's the woman's job to sort of solve that problem. So she hides herself away, she covers herself up. Um, where, which is of course a very male-centric idea because it's kind of like the problem that they're worried about is sort of um, rape, indecency, kind of inappropriate comments, whatever. So the problem rests here by and large but the problem is passed on to the woman who is asked to cover herself or hide or maintain perda. So the idea, uh, it's a question of, you know, and in kind of a modern Western approach to this, the, it's very much the man's problem to solve. So it's just different approaches to the same problem. So uh, a modern perspective, well, I won't say modern or traditional, but uh, in the West, at least, the, the response is that men uh, need to kind of control those thoughts, urges, and stop you know, inflicting violence, sexual or otherwise, on women. And the Perda approach is very much the women will kind of take take themselves out of the picture for the sort of uh, the comfort or safety of men uh, in a way to protect them. So anyway, it kind of gets pretty... Uh, the logic is a bit hard to follow for me because it's not sort of native to me. It's not something I've grown up in believing or in hearing about, but that sort of seems to be the distinction between East and West there. So we've got, we've also got epistolary, which I can't remember exactly what I mean by epistolary. 
of the book, I believe, epistolary basically means. So, because these schools are closed, so why did they also need to be destroyed? No one has gone to school following the Taliban's deadline. The army is doing nothing about it. They're sitting in their bunkers on top of the hills. They slaughter goats and eat with pleasure. Okay, yeah. She had seen the New York Times documentary Class Dismissed in Swat Valley and tracked us down. So, again, the world has kind of come to Malala and come to Swat Valley. So, it's sort of New York Times and the documentary is sort of bring the West and the East forward. And again, intertextual references, uh, the kind of the, the culture she consumes starts to become a lot more overtly Western and kind of, you know, to her, that's just like, cool, I found new stuff. Like most young people like to do, find new music, new culture. Uh, but of course, in the world where she is, that's not viewed as a positive thing at all. So. Suicide bombs, was that a bomb blast? And again, you really get the feeling of the world closing in on. Okay, I opened my wardrobe, was my uniform, school bag, and geometry set. So very much those to her, and the pencil as well, become sort of symbolic of what, was ta what has been taken away from her and what she most values. And that's chapter 13, in two parts, with different levels of pen quality.